In this section, I show how to use the normal distribution to find probabilities for a binomial variable. Remember, these are the variables that assume success or failure outcomes. Now though, be careful to note that this is only an approximation because binomial variables, as I note here, are discrete, while normal distribution is for continuous variables, which are variables that can take on any values. Therefore, as I note here also, whenever a binomial distribution is approximated by the normal distribution, we're going to do what's called a continuity correction, as I will show you shortly. It's a simple concept. Now though, before we continue, observe that as the sample size increases, in this example from 6 to 14, notice how the uh, probability distribution of a binomial variable approaches normality. In fact, starting out, it's already symmetric about the mean, so to speak. Now though, but as you increase uh, the sample size, the distribution becomes smoother, especially in, in cases where the probability of success is equal to 5. So I've shown this on Excel, and you might like to take a quick look at it right here. So here, using the binomial distribution function on Excel, for a sample size of 6, which is 6 trials, probability of success of 0.5, I calculated the probability using this using the function as you see up here for different values of x and then I plotted the, fr the line graph the frequency polygon you can see how symmetric it already is for n of 6 and probability of success of 0.5 in the same vein I did it for n of 10 15 20 and 30 and these are the results of the probabilities that have been calculated and then equally I plotted them so you can see the plotting here for n of 6, n of 10, just notice how increasingly the graph becomes smoother. n of 15, of 20, and of 30. By 30, you have a beautiful bell-shaped curve. So here's a quick example. It says a shipment contains 45 identical boxes of auto parts. The probability that a given box is not defective upon arrival at the destination point is 0.8. For the entire shipment to be accepted at the delivery point, at least 30 boxes, meaning 30 or more, must not have any defects. Using normal approximation, what is the probability that the entire shipment will be accepted upon arrival? Now, keep in mind, again, that for a shipment to be accepted on arrival, the probability of success has to be at, at least 30, 30 or more, meaning that 30 or more boxes cannot have any defects on them. So with that in mind, the first step here is to first obtain the parameter estimates for the mean and standard deviation because if we have to use normal approximation we are required to calculate z and z requires us to know the mean and standard deviation so based on the binomial formula we find that the mean is n times p you would recall that so n is 45 and p is 0.8 so that gives us a mean of 36 so on average 36 parts uh, would satisfy the expected number of successes in a shipment and standard deviation is the square root of npq where npq itself is the variance so here standard deviation is 2.683 so armed with these two pieces of information we then go proceed to step 2 we draw the normal curve and then remember the probability that we want is 30 or more now 30 or more means that for continuity correction we're gonna have to start from 29.5 and work our way upwards so that the number 30 is definitely included within this probability space we do not start from 30 because if we start from 30 exactly from 30 and given that the normal distribution is a continuous distribution, there is a high chance that we may not completely include the entire observation of 30 and going forward. So to, be, to ensure that all of 30 is included within this probability space, we start from 29.5. It is by convention in that you start from 0.5 units 
before it to be sure that this is included. So now here are other examples of continuity correction. If for example you want the probability that x is 34 or less, well 34 or less would mean that your continuity correction has to begin from 35.5 so that the number 34 is definitely included within this region. Likewise, the probability of x greater than or equal to 36, to be sure that 36 is within the space, back up a little bit to 35.5 and then work your way to the right. And finally, between 34 and 37, those two numbers inclusive, as you can see, because these are weak inequalities, it means you have to start from 35.5, you back up a little bit so that 34 is included, and on the right side, you, you end at 37.5 to make sure that the number 37 is also included within the space. So these are ex some few examples of continuity correction. Continuing with our problem, the third step is to then calculate z. So given that, given our continuity correction, our x would be 29.5, and these are the mean and standard deviation we calculated earlier, which gives us a z value of 2.42. And the probability corresponding to it is 0.4922 when you check, when you look it up in your z table, which you should now know how, how to do. So then, what this means is we're going to have to add this probability of 0.4922 to 0.5 to find the complete answer to be 0.9922. If I go back here, remember that one side, the right side, is definitely 0.5. So what we needed to do was to find this area right here. And going forward, that's 0.4922. And adding them up, that's your final answer. Now, but for quickness and ease, we can also use this website. So if we were to go there, the mean for this problem is 36, and the standard deviation of the binomial variable is 2.683, and we want the probability that x is 29.5 and above. Well, it is 30 and above, but remember, we're going to start from 29.5. So let's go to above here and type 29.5. What my 0.5? There you go. And then recalculate, and that's it. That's your answer right here. 0.9923. So that means that the probability that we're going to have 30 or more um, non-defective boxes is a pretty high one. All right, there's a 99, approximately 99% chance of accomplishing that. Now, by the way, for good measure, I show you here, if you were to use the binomial formula, you can get the exact probability. On Excel, which is where I did this, you can, for example, use the cumulative uh, distribution function to find the probability that x is 29 or less. And then it gives you this number, and you subtract it from 1, and then you find the true probability here, which is, again, approximately 0.99. So if I were to do so, as a reminder, that's it right here. All right. So that's the number of uh, parts of boxes in the shipment, probability of success. And we're going to do, let's clear these. We're going to, first of all, using the uh, cumulative function, all right, by numdist, that's it right here. It prompts you for number of successes, which is x. You click there, comma, number of uh, trials, which is your sample size, and then probability of success, which is this. And then type true to get the cumulative probability up to, all right, meaning up to 29. Therefore, 30 and above, this being discrete. See, the binomial formula recognizes the discrete nature of it. And so this would be 1 minus this probability right here. So more correctly, it is 0.989 or 0.99, which is pretty much the same thing as what we got using the normal approximation right here. Here's a, a second example. It says a recent study of cardiovascular risk uh, factors reported that 30% of adults met the conditions for hypertension. If 15 adults are evaluated, what is the probability? 
that exactly five of them meet the conditions for hypertension? This is a trick question because the answer is zero. Remember, in normal distribution, the probability of a fixed value is always zero. Normal is continuous, and so we cannot uh, uh, obtain a probability for a specific point, for a specific value. It has to be a range of values. More importantly, what's the probability that the number that meets the condition is 3 or less? So that's the probability that the number of successes, as it were, is 3 or less. Now keep in mind that the number, that the sample size here is 15 and the probability of success here is 0.3. If I go back here, that's the um, proportion reporting um, conditions for hypertension and 15 adults, the sample size. So with that, again, we have to find the mean and the standard deviation to do a normal approximation. So that's our mean and that's our standard deviation. And then continuing then, we're going to have to draw the normal curve. I placed everything on one sheet here. and That's our normal curve. And we want to find the probability that x is 3 or less. So for continuity correction, we're going to have to back up a little bit so that from 3.5, we, make, we're, we are certain that the number 3 is included within this probability space. And so this 3.5 would be used in the calculation of z as you see it up here and z comes out to be approximately 0.56. Well, it's below the mean, that's why you see the negative. But don't let that bother you because on the table, just look up approximately 0.56 because tables are usually rounded off to two decimal places. Nevertheless, this is the probability value that you're going to get, 0.2123. Now, this probability value is this space right here, this unshaded region because again the table will give you the probability that corresponds between a given value of x in this case 3.5 and the mean in this case 4.5 and the mean is at the center and so it's giving you the space so we're going to have to take this number of 0.2123 subtract it from 0.5 the total area on the on the one side of the curve and the result is 0.2877 and if you want to use um, the website also to verify this, you could do so as well. But I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you understood it. This is Pat Obi, Professor of Finance and Quantitative Methods at Purdue University, Calumet.